Ladies and gentlemen, and may I extend to you all a very warm welcome to this special ceremony for the rededication of the memorial to all those who served from here at Ringtail during World War I, and those who unfortunately lost their lives whilst doing so. I extend a special welcome to Commander Bernard Thompson, RN, our local member of parliament, Rosie Cooper, the mayor of West Lancashire District Council and consort, the chairpersons of Bursco and Latham Parish Councils, Mr. Edwin Booth and Mrs. Anne Booth from the Booth's company, obviously, Mr. Graham and Mrs. Janet Booth and Mr. Henry Booth, plus the store manager and staff, and to all the various organisations represented, either military or civilian, and of course to the rest of everyone else here today, wherever you have travelled from, and if you represent any organisation or just yourselves. And a special welcome to our bugler, who has travelled this morning from Rosyth in Scotland. As I said at the beginning, you are all, all equally welcome and thank you for your attendance and support. This memorial has only been moved a matter of yards into this new site, which has been provided by the generosity of the Booth's company. And we are obviously going to see for the first time a new memorial which has been provided by the Booth's company, for which we are all grateful. Come on. There you go, we've got it now. This site now will become the venue each year for a special service of remembrance at 11 o'clock on the 11th of November, obviously starting in a few days' time next month. Of course, events like this do not just happen. So may I take this opportunity to express the thanks and appreciation of all of us for the tremendous amount of preparation work put in by Richard Horton of the Labour and Bursco Military History Society Tess Reddington, Secretary of the Bursco Parish Council, and Julie Newall on behalf of the Booth's company. And not forgetting the groundwork undertaken by the contractors in preparing this new site to this superb standard and positioning the memorials. If you had seen this site a few weeks ago, you would have said there is no way in which it would be ready. But it is ready. And so are we. So I now hand you over to Commander Bernard Thompson RM, and he in turn will hand over to Alderman Councillor Alan Bullen, the Chairman of Bursco Parish Council. Thank you. Well, good morning from me as well. And firstly, thank you for inviting the Naval Regional Commander for Northern England and the Isle of Man, Commodore Gary Doyle. Our Commodore Doyle came to Bursco some months ago to take part in early plans for this rededication. And as a naval aviator, he was really sad not to be able to make it here today, but unfortunately was ordered by a person with lots of stars on his shoulder to be in London today and tomorrow. Fair enough excuse, I think. 
I know that uh, Com uh, Commodore Doyle is very, very grateful to uh, Richard and Lowell and everybody in the Latham and Bursco Military Historical Society for helping us to remember the great sacrifice made some 70 years ago in this place. I'm very pleased to be here to represent the Northern Naval Region today and also because I'm the proud father of a petty officer in the Fleet Air Arm. So today, in this season of remembrance, we're here on the site of HMS Ringtail, Royal Naval Air Station, Bursco, to remember the part that men and women based here played in the Second World War. Of course, the history of this site reveals that the Army also had people based here, but today I'm going to concentrate on the role of the Fleet Air Arm. The Latham and Bursco Military Historical Society's excellent website reveals that although some operational squadrons were temporarily based here in between embarkations, HMS Ringtail was primarily a training base. Now to our modern ears, the word training doesn't sound too steely or exciting. It brings to mind L plates, schools, practice for free kicks on the training ground and set pieces. But any aviator or any diver will tell you that there's no such thing as a training flight or a training dive. If things go very wrong in the air or under the water, the fact that one is under training is immaterial. The effects are equally unpleasant. Furthermore, in the years 1939 to 45, training was a very different business from today. For a starter, training pipelines were frighteningly short. Pilots were in the air a matter of weeks after pulling on their uniform for the first time. And engineers and technicians were working at the very cutting edge of mechanical and weapon engineering. And they had to learn very, very quickly. The training carried out at Royal Naval Air Station Bursco was highly technical, supporting as it did the latest versions of radar and anti-ship and submarine torpedoes. The flying program at this air station would have been relentless because the front line's demand for trained aircrew was driven by the high number of airframes and crews lost to enemy action and the crucial requirement to build up superiority in numbers and operational capability the only way of ensuring victory. And of course, these trainees were extraordinarily young, and even their hardened and experienced instructors who run this station would have been men in their early 20s. So once training here was complete, what happened to the men of Bursco? Well, in short, they went to sea in aircraft carriers to take part in some of the most grueling tasking of the Second World War. In this particular part of the world, we immediately think of the Battle of the Atlantic, World War II's longest campaign, and the one and only aspect of the war that Winston Churchill admitted scared him. Along with RAF Coastal Command, the fleet air arm played a crucial role in protecting convoys sailing to and from Liverpool. They protected them from U-boats and also from Luftwaffe air attack. A member of the fleet air arm trained at Ringtail would very likely find himself on board an escort carrier. Nothing like the Navy's purpose-built fleet carriers, these were converted merchant ships, often weighing under 10,000 tons. They only carried 15 to 18 aircraft, and the men who operated on and off their decks in the North Atlantic in the depths of winter were very special indeed. Men who trained at Ringtail also served in the Far East, and at one point, 
there were 1,300 British carrier aircraft in the Pacific preparing for the invasion of the Japanese islands and homeland. Men who flew from Bursko faced the kamikazes and supported US marine landings on Okinawa. So we're here today to remember the brave and dedicated men and women of HMS Ringtail, many of whom lost their lives in the global struggle for freedom and democracy. I'd like to finish this address with a line from a poem in Flanders Fields. It was written in 1915 by a Canadian soldier, John McRae, in memory of his friend Alex Hilmer, who was killed in action. For me, it sums up every act of remembrance, because we're here today to continue to remember the young men and women who fought for our freedom. Acts of remembrance too often focus on death and sacrifice, as if there was some sort of inevitability about that in war. Let's not forget, though, that not one of those youngsters who served at Ringtail wanted to die for his country. They were determined fighters who were prepared to give everything, including their own lives if necessary, in order to win that fight. As I see it, they don't just deserve to be remembered. I believe they would quite rightly have insisted on it. And so the poem in Flanders Fields ends like this. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you, from failing hands, we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. And so, we will remember them. This is a tribute to my stature. <laughs> um, I'm Alan Bull and I'm the chairman of, uh, Alderman Alan Bull and chairman of Bursco Parish Council. <coughs> I was once upon a time 23649717 Bullen and I was told when I was given that number I would never forget it. I said, oh yes I will. I never did and you never do, do you? <coughs> there are others far better equipped than I uh, to remind us of what RF, or what RAF, HMS Ringtail was all about and the sacrifice of those who served. <clears throat> For my part, I can only claim to be one of the few remaining residents of Bursco who were here before Air Station Ringtail existed. <clears throat> Amongst my earliest memories is one of being taken down Pippin Street to see the planes in the dispersal area. Um, and it was made very clear to me that my freedom and future would depend upon the efforts of these <laughs> Another less serious event that I remember with great clarity was the VE Day celebrations. We had a children's party at the Bull and Dog Inn, <coughs> which was gate crashed by a very drunken sailor who managed to get his son free ale all night by saying he just heard that war in Japan had finished as well. It was utterly untrue, but he did get, <laughs> did get him what he wanted. <coughs> um, it was not all uh, good news that came. I was told that <coughs> very night <coughs> uh, that um, because of that nasty Mr. Hitler, I would not be attending our local school down here, Lordgate Township School, which was, as everybody knew, vastly superior to anything in the village. And in fact, I would have to spend my life with those nasty village children uh, and, and try and get some sort of education out of it. Um, <coughs> The whole of my 77 years, <coughs> all of my 70 years in Bursko have been spent in Bursko, with the exception of the glorious years of national service, spent keeping the Red Army out of Germany. Uh, <coughs> it was a somewhat conflicting role as my father had, had come home uh, 15 years earlier, having been charged with the exact opposite. He was there to keep the <coughs> keep the Germans. Uh, Similar role in reverse. 
I suppose the earliest, this early introduction to the contradictions of politics uh, impelled me to my 50 years of much lesser but active political life. <clears throat> but it seems that half century has been filled <clears throat> with constant conflict and slaughter throughout the world. We didn't learn as much as perhaps we should have done.